welcome to QCC's Face the Region. Face the Region is produced by Quinsigamond Community College to assist our region in attaining educational, economic, and personal prosperity. Good afternoon and welcome once again to QCC's Face the Region here on Full Service Radio, AM 830 WCRN. I'm Zip Zipfell, and uh, this afternoon, chatting with Michael Bean, who is the Director of Student Life and Leadership here at QCC, and uh, that's an important aspect, I think, of uh, life here at uh, Quinsigamond Community College, and uh, you must, uh, you're in the thick of it, as they say, correct? Yes. Well, it's funny, because I usually get the question, what, what is student life, is what a lot of students will say when they come, when they first start here. And one of the answers that I typically get is the life of a student. So, <laughs> so, so all of the students... Okay, we're all set. We could just wrap it up. Yeah, so, so all of the students think that student life includes every single thing, which it does include a lot. Um, but basically, student life here, uh, we're talking about the clubs, the activities, um, leadership programming, getting involved with all the things outside of the classroom that's gonna help you build up your resume. Sure, you know, and I would think too, is the perception out there about community colleges, or should I say a college where you don't have on-campus dormitories, do people sort of perceive that student life, well, you know, it's a commuter school, it's not much happens? I think that perception is definitely still out there, um, but here at QCC, we have, we have student life just like any other institution would have, whether we have um, on campus housing or not. We have we have all the clubs, we have all the programming here, um, we have we have trips that students can go on just like they can at the big universities. Um, so so we do we do everything student life wise as any other institution would do. And uh, do the does the schedule of those activities sort of match the fact that um, as we found out on many programs earlier here on the show uh, the class schedules run all different times, so do the activities match the, you know, the varying yes. class schedules? So, so we have we have classes going on six days a week at all times. So, so certainly um, we have a peak time, um, usually afternoon on uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is usually our peak time. Um, so we do a lot of programming towards that, but we also know that we have evening students, so we have to do evening programming. Um, and then sometimes we occasionally have stuff on the weekends as well. So we'll do some, some volunteering out in the community on weekends and stuff like that. Sure. So let me go back to the beginning of the program. So when a uh, p prospective student says, gee, you know, what, what am I going to, what am I going to find here in QCC mm -hmm. as far as student life? What is your answer? You are going to find an array of opportunities to get involved in with whatever you would like to get involved in. There's clubs for just about any interest group that you have. If there's not a club for it, you can start your own club. Um, you just um, come to the Fuller Student Center and we can help you get that process started. There's leadership programming if that's if you're looking to build up your resume. Um, we have social events if you're just looking to come and have fun and, and get prizes and play games and food. College um, mixers, as yeah, they say. Yeah, get the, get the QCC swag. That's it. <laughs> Everyone wants the swag. A couple so, of wyverns loose yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, I mean, there we have a little bit for everyone. Great. Uh, so let, let's talk a little bit about the leadership programming. Uh, explain that whole process. So there's a lot of different ways that students can develop leadership skills here. And a lot of it's just being involved in the different clubs. We do have Student Senate. Um, which, which is kind of the voice of the students here. Um, so they do a lot of leadership programming there. We have uh, PTK, Phi Theta Kappa, which is our honor society, and they do a lot of leadership programming there as well, um, as do all of our clubs here. And, but one of the programs we're rolling out this fall is a new program, which is uh, called the QCC Leadership Academy. And it's a year-long program, and it's uh, filled with workshops on different various topics of leadership and then it culminates with a service project. So they, they go to the workshops and then they get together kind of as a group. So you kind of work, it kind of works in a flow um, where when they first start the program, they're kind of figuring out who they are as a person. Um, so it might be um, kind of what their personality style is, what's, what's their leadership style. 
and then it kind of moves into how do I work with a group of diverse people? Um, how do I communicate with them? How do I solve conflict? Um, and then it culminates, so it, eventually you should have all these skills to do the one project. So it kind of ends with the service project. You know, one of the things, and I know it's not completely unique to Quinn Sigamund, uh, but there is quite a diverse student population. Um, and I would imagine, uh, you know, as director of student life and leadership, you've got to take that into you know, consideration as well as, as far as uh, getting folks involved. Yes, absolutely. And we, we have, we're, we're trying to expand our diversity programming. Um, one of our staples is our diversity week, which happens every year in April. Um, that's one of our more popular events that we have here at QCC. We also um, started um, a diversity trivia series, which we'll be starting this fall, um, just to kind of open it up to kind of educate students on the different cultures and the different backgrounds and to open up the dialogue and get people, people talking. Right, and, it's, and when you mention um, leadership programming, mm -hmm. um, it's, is, it, is programming that term actually training or uh, just the, an umbrella for the whole process? So training, I, w I would call it development. Okay. Is what I, yeah. what I would frame it as. Uh, and with that said, uh, public speaking or interaction or uh, the democratic process or? So, Certainly, depending on which leadership development piece you are into, like student senate certainly would be would be a lot of democracy, um, public speaking. Um, you would certainly develop those skills in there. Um, the QCC leadership program in particular um, is is designed around a specific um, theory. It's it's designed around the social change model of leadership development. Um, so so the workshops are designed to kind of graduate them through the process of that model. And once they take on this project, what would be a typical example of a, a final project? So, I mean, a final project can be partnering with a, a local nonprofit, um, doing some community service for them, and probably doing some sort of uh, fundraiser in the community for them. Right. Great. Great. We're chatting with Michael Bean, the Director of Student Life and Leadership here at Quinn Sigamond Community College, and we'll find out more about just exactly what is student life at QCC as we take our first break here on QCC's Face the Region, coming to you from Full Service Radio, AM 830 WCRN. We'll be right back. Welcome back to QCC's Face the Region here on Full Service Radio, AM 830 WCRN. I'm Zip Zipfell, and this afternoon visiting with Michael Bean, who is the Director of Student Life and Leadership here at QCC. Uh, as we uh, head into September, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, obviously uh, fall classes are starting up, I think it's September 6th, so uh, I would imagine you're quite busy. Uh, uh, what activities do you have planned uh, for the new student population coming into QCC? Sure. So you are certainly correct and pretty busy. Um, so, <laughs> so right now we are in orientation season. So um, we have, we've already done two orientations and we have three more scheduled. Um, so at orientation, the, the new students would come in, um, find, about, found, find out about all the resources that we have here at QCC that's going to help them succeed. They get to connect with their peers, um, and then we, we give away some prizes to make it engaging, um, and they get to connect with um, the department heads here as well. Um, so they can make those connections and figure out um, what services they're going to need here at QCC. And then, and then we roll right into the start of the school year. So we're rolling right into our welcome week. So some of the things that we have for welcome week are we have uh, games on the green. So we'll have some volleyball, some cornhole. We got some um, snow cones. We got some music. We got some prizes, uh, some fun stuff there. And then um, we also have some, some bingo plans where people can win some school supplies. We have... Um, NFL kickoff party, of course, we got the first game on September 7th, the Patriots. Um, so certainly being in this area, it's, it seems like we, we, it's pretty common to do something <laughs> for it. I think so. So uh, we got I some I don't game. see too many Giant fans running around here. Oh, easy now, easy now. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually a Giants okay, fan. but I'm sorry. But I'm serving the population here. I understand. So. <laughs> I know. Diplomacy is key. <laughs> So we got some games and prizes and, and some food for that. So That's great. You know, you mentioned uh, 
students getting a chance to chat with the department heads, I think the accessibility of the professors and, and folks teaching here is really extraordinary. Talk a bit about that. Well, you, I mean, you really can't be a community college without being a community. So, I mean, that's that's one of the keys to being an effective community college is, is being actively engaged in the entire process. So you'll, you'll see staff and faculty out there meeting and mingling with the students, and, and, that's, and that's really what makes them feel comfortable and at home like a community. So. Right, and uh, do you find the students respond to that? Or? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, you can, you can survey all the students who leave here, and you'll, you'll find the majority of them say that's one of the things that kept them here. Yeah. It's those connections that they made. Absolutely. Um, as far as Welcome Week, uh, as far as the non-traditional students, and uh, not necessarily talking about the commuter students, mm -hmm. but somebody who has a pretty, uh, for the lack of a better term, erratic schedule, maybe taking an online sure. course or coming to, or whatever, is, is there a specific plan for them, or are they, yeah. obviously they're invited as well, but mm -hmm. how do you access them? Yeah, so we, we do have um, specific events for them. For the first couple of days, um, we have our Ask Me tables, which are kind of just uh, general info tables to help uh, welcome students to the campus and help them find their classroom and, and give them giveaways and all that. Um, so that so that goes all day to cover um, daytime and evening students. And then and then we, we usually have some evening student mixers um, for, our, for our night students and we'll, we'll have prizes, games, and food. Right. Um, and, and the other thing is, I guess, um, with a non-traditional student who hasn't necessarily, you know, there's a wide variety of ages mm -hmm. as well as uh, backgrounds and diversity. Um, how, how do you deal with that? Has that been a challenge for you? Or? I mean, it's, it's, always, it's always a challenge to make sure that you're serving the needs of, of everyone. Um, but, I mean, I've, I've been doing this for a while, and, and typically you, you find out what, what kind of their needs are. So um, we have, we have some, some groups of people here that are really engaged. Um, for example, PTK has a lot of non-traditional people in their leadership. Um, group so typically they'll get really involved um, in fact some of them served on our student panel at orientation and we had a lot of non-traditional students at orientation ask how can they get involved is there a support system here for them um, because they haven't been in school for for a long time and and that's it's nice that we have those leaders there that let them know that we do have these support services here for them and they can they can feel just like any other student can uh, what was your background before you took this position at QCC? I was I was doing the same thing down in Florida. Uh, at a at a, another institution, Florida Southwestern State College. Okay, now that was that on campus housing. In that case, we had we had multiple campuses. Our main campus did have on campus housing. Okay, so so again, the the community college and uh, I hate to use the term commuter school. Mm -hmm. So that was a bit of an adjustment coming here. I a little bit or is it the same? Well I was on I was actually on one of the smaller campuses where we didn't have housing so it was a commuter campus. Right you mentioned um, when we took a break a couple of minutes ago uh, there's quite a few clubs there's half a couple dozen or? Oh yeah I would say we probably have about 25 or so clubs um, ranging from some are in specific major fields um, some are in specific interest groups um, so we have a wide variety of clubs. Uh, can you give me any specifics? So we have, we have an anime club, we have a billiards club, we have a criminal justice club, we have a nursing club, dental hygiene club, just to name a few. <laughs> anime, wow, that's kind of cool. What's that like? Well, I, I can't I can't tell you that I know much about anime, but I no, do know do we I. have an anime club. That's why I was asking. Uh, too funny. And dental hygiene, do people get together and floss? What's the deal with that? So that that's when that one's more like the major specific clubs. Right, yes. Yeah, so. Um, so that's typically the group that's that's into that field. Yeah. Um, do you find the students, uh, you know, I think I see such motivation in most of the students that attend, or virtually every student I've talked to here on the show, um, and does that kind of carry through to their their want to be involved and get involved and get into those leadership programs? And I would imagine it's kind of a, it, it sort of collectively inspires other people to do the same. Yeah. 
Well, and you know, it, it's funny that you say that because sometimes at a commuter school, you'll hear a lot of people say, well, students just don't want to be involved. They're too busy. And, and I always respond with that saying, well, we're just not reaching them in the right way. And when I first started here, I didn't really have full access to communicate with the ways that I wanted to. Um, so once I got access to communicating with them, for example, our, our day of service, um, which we typically usually get about 20 to 30 people that sign up for it. Well, I was able to communicate with a variety of different ways and we had over 100 people sign up. So it's not, it's not that people don't want to be involved at the community college. It's just they're tougher to reach because they're so busy. So we got to figure out different modes of communication. And I would imagine social media. Social media is a big a one. Big part of yes, that. absolutely. Yeah. Great. We're chatting with uh, Michael Bean, the Director of Student Life and Leadership here at uh, QCC. Uh, going to take another quick break, and when we return, we'll find out more, as we do every week right here on Face the Region, QCC's Face the Region on Full Service Radio, AM 830, WCRN. Welcome back once again to QCC's Face the Region here on Full Surface Radio, AM 830 WCRN. I'm Zip Zipfell, and today visiting with Michael Bean, who is the Director of Student Life and Leadership here at QCC. And as we found out in the first couple of segments, uh, you're a pretty busy guy, and there is, QCC has a lot to offer in that student life uh, venue. Yes, we, there's a lot of different things that Student Life covers. We talked about some of them, orientation, clubs, activities, trips, leadership programming, so a lot of stuff going on. What are some of the other ways that uh, your department uh, interacts with some of the other uh, disciplines and, and, and departments here sure. on campus? Sure, so um, we, we work well with career services. Um, so, so right now, I haven't been here that long, um, but um, we're, we're trying to figure out how we can partner and, and figure out um, how we can add on to their events and how they can add on to my events. Um, so career services, right now we're partnering with a couple things. We're gonna, we're gonna try something with the career fair coming up. Um, PTK, as I mentioned, PTK um, is always active. They always help out with orientation with our student panel. Athletics, certainly always partnering with athletics, and certainly we, with sports. We have intercollegiate sports here. We have basketball, uh, baseball, soccer. Um, we're always, that's part of student life. So you, I mean, coming here to QCC, that's the experience you're gonna get. You're gonna get these activities and you have the athletics that you can get involved in as well. So are you saying like a, a 50 plus guy that uh, used to have a good jump shot in his heyday has a shot at making the Quinn Sig uh, basketball team? <laughs> if you have eligibility, why not? Are, now are all students eligible? I guess they are, right? If, if they haven't played, yes. Yeah. That's if they the, have eligibility, sure. Wow, that's cool. That's, that's a huge plus. Um, and also, too, do you see, uh, you know, it seems like, and I, again, I would, when I was going to school so many years ago, and I was uh, at more of a uh, private college type deal, um, and I personally did not have a heck of a lot of motivation at the time, the students I see that attend here seem to be so motivated and focused on what they want to do, and also, it, it, but at the same time, I think the school does a great job of determining what that focus is for, for kids who aren't quite, and, and non-traditional students who are maybe trying to branch out to a different career. Um, do you see that? Do you find that to be true? Yeah, absolutely. And I think what's, I think what's changed over the last maybe couple decades or so is people went to college and they just assumed that they were going to get a job right out of college. And I think now it's a little different because the economy and, and you have everyone going to college. So everyone is going to have that degree. So they're applying for the same job as you are. So I think people realize now when they come to college that they need to make sure that they're being involved. So and they max, can, and maxing out and their maxing time as out, well. Exactly. So they can build up their resume because they need to make sure that they separate themselves from that candidate pool. So obviously it takes something like a leadership program. Not only does it look good on your resume, but it's just an you know, added firepower when you go in to try to land that exactly. job. Exactly, and that's what employers are looking for today. They're looking for those social skills. Right. Um, so if, uh, if you, I was a student or a potential student or a, a potential non-traditional student listening today, 
say, um, how would I, uh, A, find you? Uh, how would I find out more about some of the activities that you guys are providing? So certainly, we have, we have the Fuller uh, Student Center, which is right at the center of the campus. That is the hub of all activities here on campus. So that, that is where you would find out about all the clubs, all the activities coming up. Um, that's where you could get information on starting a club. And certainly we do have online resources as well. We have a Facebook page for Quinn Sigmund Student Life. We have um, the online events calendar on the QCC website. Um, and certainly if anyone's interested in athletics as well, they can, they can step up to the athletic center and check out the gym and intramural sports. And um, they have a nice facility up there as well. Including the guy with the spare tire and the good jump shot from 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you've been here how long now? I've been here, what, nine months? Nine months, wow, nine so months. you're a relative newbie. Uh, what are some of your goals? Where do you see uh, Student Life and Leadership, your department, sure. headed? Yeah. So the QCC Leadership Academy was one of my goals, um, so we'll be implementing that this fall. Um, another one of my goals is to just keep collecting feedback from the students, um, make sure I'm visible, make sure I'm out there, um, because it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be me determining what needs to happen here at QCC. The students should be, should be driving that. Um, so, so collecting feedback and, and determining what kind of development they need. Um, may, maybe this Leadership Academy isn't going to hit a specific need, um, so maybe I'll have to tweak it next year. And it's just, it's just collecting data and figuring out what the students here at QCC need. And down the road, uh, any, uh, any other concepts that you'd like to implement? Sure, sure. I, I think one of the things we're going to try to expand on this this year is uh, Spirit Week to try to get um, students more connected with QCC and get them more engaged with athletics and, and activities here. Um, so so we, might, we might have a couple new things there. Great, great. Um, a couple of minutes ago we kind of talked about how uh, you use social media as a way to, to keep in contact um, with the student population. Um, has that, uh, do you see uh, social media as a, as a positive as far as bringing kids on campus together or, or sure. is there a negative side to it? No, it's, it's I haven't seen a negative side. I see, yeah. it as, I see it as all positive. I mean, any, any way you can reach a, a different population that's gonna be on social media or, or, I mean, everyone's pretty much on social media today. Um, and I'm not the social media guru, although although I may look fairly young here. I mean, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> you look super, young to me. not super young. Yeah. Um, so so certainly a, a lot of the students will come in and teach me stuff. Um, but uh, Facebook certainly we, we use Facebook quite a bit. Post our events, post pictures of our events, anything that we can post up there where students will see it and they'll be like, oh, well, I didn't know they did that at QCC. And again, if you can, and I don't want to call them fears, but um, for the non-traditional, perhaps older student, mm -hmm. maybe somebody's got a full-time job and they're attending at night, what would their avenue be to find out about what's going on? So their avenue would be the same way. They can stop by the Fuller Student Center. We're open uh, till 7 p.m. on Monday through Wednesday once the fall starts. Great. Terrific. Well, uh, Michael Bean, pleasure to talk to you. Continued success as uh, director, and I know you're just getting your feet wet here, uh, director of Student Life and Leadership. Uh, looking forward again to Welcome Week this week, and a uh, or is it next, 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 next week, week? Starting September 6th. And yep. that kicks off in when and where? It kicks off September 6th, uh, that's, so that's a Wednesday, and it's going to be right out on the green uh, right next to the Fuller Student Center. Great. Great having you here, and uh, that'll do it for this edition of QCC's Face the Region. Join us again next week at the same time on Full Service Radio, AM 830, WCRN. This has been Quinsickamond Community College's Face the Region. Join us again next weekend on AM 830, WCRN.